I'm Kelly Rowland, and my last meal would be caviar with potato chips, cheeseburger with french fries, and tacos with a pineapple margarita, A5 Wagyu and mashed potatoes, then a peach cobbler, chocolate cake, and chocolate peanut butter pie for dessert. Every person has exactly two things in common. We all gotta eat and we're all gonna die. Today we're joined by Grammy Award winner, multi-platinum recording artist, star and producer of Mia Culpa on Netflix, and the only person in history to successfully send a text message via Microsoft Excel, Kelly Rowland, welcome to the show. I'm sorry, I had to do it. Oh my God. I had do you, to do it. Do you know how much flack I get from that? I'm sorry to be one of the people adding to oh, that. Oh, it's all right. I'm so used to it now. Do you remember in the Dilemma music video shoot, mm -hmm. did anybody address that at the time? No. <laughs> and I'm, I'm actually mad at them that they didn't because they made me look nuts. <laughs> just now's period. You well, know you know seem I mean? so mad that he wasn't returning the text and it was like, well, What did you be. expect? <laughs> because it's just a draft, my dear. Uh, it turns out that there actually is a way to put a hyperlink to an email underneath an Excel spreadsheet. So now you can tell people that that's exactly what you're doing and that they just didn't know the tech at the time. What he said. <laughs> If you need a freelance publicist, I'm going to uh, <laughs> No, but uh, one, thank you so much for being here. I'm thank incredibly you. excited. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Of course. Have you thought about your last meal before? I think every time someone asks, sometimes it changes. But one thing that stays the same is a cheeseburger, mm -hmm. tacos, and what else? Oh, anything with chocolate and peanut butter just makes me so happy. <laughs> I love that. Um, you, I, I think it was off camera, uh, said, pompous ass about yourself <laughs> with the A5 Wagyu and the caviar. <laughs> I'm curious about that because you, the cheeseburger and the tacos, like that's some like good yeah, home cooked food. Yeah. Uh, but no, you're like fully in your bougie era and you're cool with that. This particular situation, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, how often do you think about death? N I don't. You don't? I don't, I don't. I I'm so busy being content and full of joy with life and watching life in my children's eyes, like starting it all over again and learning about my own and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, navigating my way through it to be thinking about the end of it. I just want to enjoy it. Well, that sounds so reasonable. <laughs> that makes me, because most people are like, yeah, I get death anxiety, but like the, that, those dark thoughts never come in of like, man, this is all going to end. Like you're just yeah. busy actually enjoying it. Well, you know what's funny? When I see a snake, that thought comes. Like I yeah. don't like snakes. I just, ugh, just <laughs> they, I always think about them. What if it's poisonous? What if I have so many what ifs in my head? And yeah, with life, I just think about gratitude. And even if I did, I think about, man, what a great life. Like how blessed I am. Like I, I chose wisely on my husband. <laughs> You know what yeah. I mean? And have two beautiful, wonderful boys and the people who are in my life right now, I value and treasure so greatly, so much. So I just enjoy that, enjoy them, enjoy moments, and I'm grateful for every single one. But when I see a snake, it's <laughs> definitely, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, sure. I am excited to enjoy some of those blessings of your life with you today. You ready to eat? Yes, I am. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, Bougie Era Kelly, for your first course, we have the full caviar service with potato chips. We have salmon roe, we have beluga caviar that's coming from the sturgeon, then we have golden ocetra, lovely kettle cooked potato chips, and then for accoutrement, we have some sieves, egg white and egg yolk, chives, creme fraiche, and diced shallots. Uh, please dig in. I am so excited. I'm gonna move the chips closer to you. So you, were, you were looking at them like, you know, you really needed them and... <laughs> oh my gosh, the best ones are kettle cooked. When's, when's the first time you had caviar? Um, it was a Destiny's Child commercial set, funny enough. Um, it was Michelle Williams' mom who knew about caviar. And so they bring the caviar over. We don't, didn't know what it was, you <laughs> yeah. know, very Southern girls. And we said, uh, no, nah, we, we don't know what that is. It mm -hmm. looks crazy. And next thing I knew, we finished it. Cheers. Mm. I just, I'm just, I'm gonna do what I do in the club. Yeah, you gotta dance. I'm dancing, and I'm here. Mm. I'm staying in my lane. Mm. Mm -hmm. Then you gotta go for another one. And then I'm gonna let you shine, and then I'm just here. <laughs> I'm just here, I'm, I'm almost keeping the rhythm. You got you know? it. Yeah. You got it. it. I do wanna talk about your new movie that you're starring in mm -hmm. and producing, Mia Culpa on Netflix. Mm -hmm. You play an ambitious lawyer mm -hmm. who takes a case with a cagey yet sultry uh, client. Um, this is probably the biggest project you've produced on so far, right? It is, absolutely. And 
The interesting thing is, is taking something like this on, I knew, you know, that it would be such an, a journey. You know what I mean? And, and I was so grateful to Tyler who, when I asked him, he's like, yeah, but he said it like it was no thing. You know what I, what I mean? I was like, but I promise you, I'm gonna be really involved. He said, I know you are. Mm -hmm. He's like, and I'm off, like, let's go, I support you. I started making decisions and he probably looked at me like, why I let this girl? <laughs> you just came in and started swinging, you're like. I did, and, and, and it was so awesome. And, and um, I'm forever so grateful to him for that, but it was fun. What did you learn about your own ambitions in the film industry from working as a producer with somebody as experienced as Tyler? It's a lot of work. Mm. Cause you're overseeing so many people, you know, you don't look at a film and think it takes so many people to make all of this come to life. You know what I mean? But it's not just the production there, it's the, the distribution, you know what mm. I mean? And all the powers that be behind that and people who are excited. You want people who are passionate about, you know, what they do, whether that's, uh, the director to uh, the person who's gonna push the movie. You know what I mean? Everyone that's involved in the movie making process is so incredibly important. I just wanna say, I feel so guilty asking you questions because then you can't eat while you're directly answering. Oh, right. I almost wanna pretend to like look for my phone. No! Like, what is going on so you can enjoy the caviar? It's okay. I'll make I'm the good. next question longer and rambly so you can get as many chips and caviar <laughs> as possible. Okay. Um, even if you haven't thought a lot about your own death, I have thought a lot about your death since your on-screen debut, that was way creepier than I intended. I want you to know that. <laughs> but, 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 your first, your on-screen debut, your feature film debut, 2003's Freddy vs. Jason, yes. was the last horror movie that I ever saw in theaters because there is a scene, mm -hmm. where, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it now, when were you gonna get to it? Sorry. Where Freddy Krueger rips out your nose. Yep. And I was so traumatized by that as an 11 year old that I never went back. Um, so oh, you saved says, me a lot of money. Got your nose. Got your nose. Mm -hmm. Then you eventually get clipped by Jason Voorhees. Yep. What do you remember about your first uh, big screen death? I just remember on that set, it was actually really scary at night, like in yeah. real life, like in real life scary. I remember it was very cold and sitting there and having to look like it was just like my last breath. And I was like, oh, shit, this is happening. It was, it was kind of like that, it was so strange. But I had, I, I had a really great time on that set. They did scare me though. Like everybody just, cause they knew I was just on pins and needles. Cause Freddie, I remember in my like house, my brother wasn't supposed to be watching it, mm -hmm. but as a kid. So yeah, I, all of that trauma just came back to haunt me on that set for sure. You're watching The Curse of Bridge Hollow with your son Titan who's nine now. Mm -hmm. And he saw you in danger and thought you were gonna die on screen. Yeah. Tell me about that moment. He cried. No. Oh. I mean, oh. it was, oh, I'm so sad. I feel so bad about <laughs> I didn't that mean moment. to breathe. No, this is a happy moment. No, 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 moment, no, no, no. It's a happy moment because it's actually, it's funny to me. Mm. But I remember I was so excited to show him this movie. I was like, it's not that bad. It's like at all. I was like, I should have thought about the, that before. Mm. It's, anyway, so we're watching it and I'm like, and this part is not, it's not, you know, real, baby. It's just pretend I'm, I'm right here. And he watches it. He's like, Mommy, no! <laughs> it's, it's a whole moment. I was like, I'm, I'm fine. I'm right here. I'm right here. He's mommy. It was a whole thing, and so I was like, yeah, that was a very bad parenting moment for me. Really bad call. How do you handle larger, more adult questions with a small child like that? Because it seems like you take very many. Um, you're very intentional about the way that you parent. I mean, you've written mm -hmm. a book on parenting, mm -hmm. but how do you deal with when Titan comes up to you and says? What happens when you die? How do you explain that? Uh, oh, oh, this one day I remember, I can't think of what we were doing and what made him come around to that thought. But sure enough, he says, um, I'm not ready to go yet. I can't think of like what fully happened. The parts that I do remember, he's like, I'm not, I don't want to go yet or something like that. But I, t I tried to comfort him, mm -hmm. you know, and just saying how, you know, I think that, I was like, what do you think happens? You know, and then to give him the space to um, use his imagination. And so I said, I'll tell you what I think happens. I think there's a big bright light and the light comes and you're kind of in this really cool bubble. I was like, and all you can do is smile because it's light all around you and you have this really, really fun, happy feeling in your tummy and all you can do is just laugh. And you just are, it feels like somebody's giving you a hug. And he goes, 
okay, <laughs> you know what I mean? But I think in those moments, like I try to use an imagination. He's like, you know, I don't, sometimes if I leave, he's like, I don't want you to go. And I remember this one time, I remember these moments now. <laughs> wow, this is so strange. Um, but I said, why? He was like, you know, I said, don't I always come back? And I think that sometimes he is wanting to express the fear of, you know, me mm. not coming back. But I was like, I always come back. That was maybe the most beautiful explanation of death that I've ever heard. Oh. And I think we need to start explaining things to adults the way that we would explain them to a to kid, kid. Match, frankly. <laughs> because I haven't felt that good about mortality in a long time. Well, oh, yeah, well. For real. I mean, well, you think about what we're living around. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like sometimes you, sometimes that, that dark thought or the heaviness of, or weight of the world sometimes kind of taints the light. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that sometimes we forget about the light, but the light is the thing that keeps us going. Some days you get caviar and some days you're fishtailing your car in the rain. <sighs> oh, oh, LA in this rain. But we have caviar. But we have caviar. <laughs> Kelly, for course number two, I'm gonna try and get through this fast so you can start eating as soon as possible. We have a hamburger, we have a quarter pound patty, 70-30 ground chuck, mm. griddled super hard, all the fixings, Thousand Island, ketchup, mustard, lettuce, tomato, pickles, onions, all that on a brioche bun. We have a beef taco sampler. We want to show you all of the facets of taco. So we have a carne asada street taco. Yes. We have a good old fashioned ground beef hard shell taco. And then we have a braised beef with serranos and pickled onion taco and flour tortilla. <gasps> we have some fresh cut fries, double fried twice, served along with ketchup. Gotta have the newspaper in there. And then a pineapple margarita with Don Julio 1942. Shaken up fresh pineapple juice, some lime simple, little bit of tahini on the rim. <clears throat> I know, I know. This is you, you did this for me too. You know, this is us. I'm just so happy right now. <laughs> I am too. <sighs> okay. T I mean, tell me about it. Tell, tell me about the pineapple margarita. Tell so the pineapple margarita actually started in Atlanta. I'll never forget, I was there with my cousins and they muddled the pineapple and uh, just put all this love into it. And I tasted it and asked for another one immediately. <laughs> it was so good. We can get your refills too here. Yes, yeah, so um, then I remember um, trying it at home recently and it was really, really good. It's, it's, it's my thing. French fries, who doesn't love French fries? Mm. Like, but it, this is actually like a, a nod to my husband because he loves French fries so much. And so that's something that like, we'll literally sit up there and he'll talk and we talk and we sit up there and we laugh. And we, so we share French fries in that way together. Um, tacos just takes me back to my time in Texas. And when I fell in love with Texas, one of the many things you fall in love with Texas is the cuisine. So you get so many different varieties of food, but the Tex-Mex is on another level. Mm -hmm. So when you just started to go through that just now, I think my heart skipped a beat, to be honest, because <laughs> one of my first memories of a taco was the hard taco. And oh, you pickled the onions. <laughs> I'm just so happy. Kelly, you deserve it, okay? You, you deserve it. You pickle the onions. It's a big deal. So <laughs> then you have burgers. Like, you know, anything between two pieces of bread is great to me. I don't care what it is. And a hot dog is considered... A sandwich. A sandwich, thank you. Yes. A woman of reason. A hot dog is between two pieces of bread. Uh, but cheers. Oh, cheers. Cheers. Gotta flip to the tahini side. Who did this? I think it was V. She came in. She came in with the margarita and was real proud of it. She should be. That is unreal. All right, which one are we gonna start with? I'm looking to you for cues. I say the street taco. Mm -hmm. uh, should we bust out the the tapatio for it? Yes, we Please. should. <laughs> so we also have a little bit of avocado sauce on there. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's tucked in there. We wanted to load it up with steak. Too though. little. Oh. I'm always like, do I want both? Tortillas are just one. I'm a big fan of taking off the outside tortilla. Nobody actually knows how the two tortilla things started. I would like to know. They think it's just because the quality of tortillas is so bad, like at stores. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mmm. Kelly. Mmm. Kelly. Now we sink deeper into the booth. You don't have to. My fabric won't let me. <laughs> this is so good. Mmm. Oh, what are we mm. doing? What are we doing? What do you mean, what are we doing? I mean, I'm, what are we doing? Okay, Kelly, I squeeze the line. I'm doing, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. <laughs> Sorry, this is my home. I forget that I need to people, you know what I mean? Mm. I have questions I'm supposed to ask, and I don't want to ask them because I'm just enjoying basking in your joy of the food, and I just want to let this wash over me for a second. But 
It was the line. Well, you too. I'm going to ask you a question. So mm-hmm. you spent a lot of your childhood in Houston. You were performing from such a young age. Mm-hmm. You started singing in churches. You actually switched churches mm-hmm. because you were singing secular music and some people didn't agree with that. What was that experience like? Wow. No one's ever asked me that blunt, but you were exactly right. Um, blunt questions are easier to ask when there's tacos and margaritas involved. You're right. You know, it was a space and place that my mom really, really loved. And around that time, I was becoming a woman. And when it came to making decisions by myself and faith and, you know, where I wanted to decide to worship, that really meant, really meant a lot to me. And this particular church did that for me. Yeah. And it gave me a sense of home every single time I came home. It was uh, Bread of Life um, in Houston, Texas. And it was just this, I, I remember like, ah, uh, just I, I can feel it. You know, I can feel what it felt like. It felt like home. And if you're like out and moving into the world and the world is moving so fast and you're moving with the world so fast, mm-hmm. it was nice to be still. You said the music industry would have chewed me up and spit me out had it not been for God. Mm-hmm. And looking at everything from when you started performing 11, 12 years old, Mm -hmm. from girls' time on Star Search, Mm -hmm. through like the tabloid era of Destiny's Child to now come out on the other end as, Mm -hmm. you know, not only a veritable superstar, but somebody who has a beautiful family, somebody who's producing movies with Tyler Perry. Mm -hmm. Um, Tell me what God meant to you as having that sort of safe haven. Oh, my safe space. Yeah. And I think like the older I get, the more I'm learning about the walk, You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because when I was a kid, you're like, oh, thank God, I'm a Christian now. It's going to be great. (laughs) You know what I mean? And when you um, have faith, I don't care what background you are, when you have a faith, I feel like in some sort of way, when you want to make the right decision, there is struggle. Mm. But yeah, so I I just think that uh, God is my everything. I'm so grateful to my mother and my grandmother and my aunts for introducing me to faith at such a young age. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what you've learned about your self-worth through your music career and also through faith. Was there a single moment where you realized that like, I am Kelly Rowland and I am a superstar and I am deserving? Motherhood has blessed me in ways you can't even imagine. Mm -hmm. I I say that because when I'm sitting up there talking to my son, my oldest son, Titan, I'm realizing there's a message in there that I actually need. So your children are like going boom, boom. Like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. something in you that needs to be ignited and reminded. So I'm, I always like to be humble to those moments and be able to understand them because while he's nine, here I am at 40 some years old and I'm still learning this lesson, whatever it might be in it. You know what I mean? And sometimes you have those moments and, and sometimes you don't, but I, I think that motherhood is just, blessed me tremendously for sure and I realized that if I'm telling him something I have to like talk the talk and walk the walk mm. but yeah. D- dig into the burger it's getting okay. cold it's getting cold oh we wait, wait what it. about the hard shell taco go 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 okay. I'm going where you're going okay mm. oh my god oh my god when's the last time you had one of these a drunken night at Taco Bell when was that? Give us a date. No. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Do you still eat Taco Bell? Do you still have a penchant for fast food? Yes. Mm-hmm. Same. Same. We didn't even try a fry. We didn't try a fry, Kelly. I was eating fries the whole time. We haven't tried the burger yet. Should we do it? We should do it. Let's Finally. do it. I'm going to give this a little smashy smash smash. A little or do you fully compress? I fully compress. Same, 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 same. Yes. I was made trash compacting the burger. Mm-hmm. What's that? You sound like a bear cat. What I the hell to God, is a bear cat? A bear cat. It's like, uh, they're from like Canada. They like, what are they called? <laughs> you don't know no, a bear cat? I don't know what a bear cat is. Oh, you made a perfect bear cat sound. Oh, well. Uh, it's a compliment, you're, by the way. You're welcome. I think they're really cute animals. A lot of people think they're not. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this whole hand is just going to be covered in sauce. Mm-hmm. All right, ready? Who did this? This is a lily. This is a lily original. Lily. I don't know if you're in a relationship right now, but what I will say, I am married. But a side piece for food Mm. is something I will definitely be able to talk to my husband about. 
Uh, Lily has a fiance whose name is Alex. He's very lovely, but if him and Tim can play video games together while you and Lily are cooking, I get it. Anyways, Kelly, I wanted to ask you a little bit about about music. You have been inspired by so many genres. Your first album, Simply Deep, you had a lot of alt rock inspiration in there, and then of course you had your collab with David Guetta that went mm -hmm. platinum in like nine different countries, top ten in fifty. Twenty two, but who's counting? <laughs> what are you currently inspired by right now, and mm -hmm. when are we going to see new music? Okay. Mm, as far as music is concerned, like what I'm listening to, mm -hmm. it would have to be the likes of like Victoria Monet. Of course. Um, it would also be Snow Allegra, uh, Anita Baker. I mean, it's always Anita Baker. It's always Sade. Mm -hmm. My my um, playlist is kind of old school right now. It's like old school and jazz and R&B. Because I remember dancing in college to When Love Takes Over. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're out there, glow sticks, everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but are there any like cross genre collabs that you would want to do in the future? Like a whole new genre out there that you're like a whole new genre. I mean, I have so much fun with dance. I, yeah. I really do. I it's just so alive. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's so live. And when you're actually doing the record, you can. I know it sounds crazy, but I can actually like see people's memories sometimes. Like the yeah. way like they look when they like hear the song. It's like it's like everything's attached to a memory when you see someone live, at least for me it is. And mm -hmm. I can't help but to feel like everyone feels that way. Yeah. So as I am um, performing the song, sometimes I just put the mic down and just start skipping around the damn stage. I just get so excited. But I think that that's what music does. It, it should create this like really beautiful euphoric space that just makes everybody feel like just for the moment, you don't have to worry about anything. And mm -hmm. someone actually like connects with you and other people around you connect with you on this space and level that, you know, can only be defined in this moment. It's pretty dope. Kelly, for course number three, we have the infinitely refillable pineapple margarita. We don't know where it comes from. The glass stays full. Yes, we love that. And then we have the A5 Wagyu. So this is a uh, olive fed Wagyu that we got imported from the Kagoshima prefecture of Japan. Okay. Sliced it thin, seared it as hot as possible. Should be cooked about medium, medium well. Get that intramuscular fat render down and then some pump puree. Good old fancy mashed potatoes, tons of butter. Please dig in and tell me all about the eight year olds that you're eating A5 Wagyu with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why that was so funny. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's so funny. So we um, take the kids to um, have like a weekend in New York City for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Like Christmas is always so magical. They also love Home Alone too. So in the spirit of that, we basically take them there. And so we take them to one of these restaurants. It's one of my favorite uh, Korean like barbecue spots called Kote. So we go there and they have all these different, you know, styles of uh, and cuts of beef that you can order. So we decide to like have the kids try everything. We didn't know, I didn't know, <laughs> that an eight year old would be able to school me <laughs> on what an A5 Wagyu steak is. And all of a sudden, you know, sure enough, I'm like, oh, this one is still, oh, this one's, oh, ooh, this one is even better than the last one. And <laughs> Connor jumps up and goes, that's the A5, Miss <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> She's like, A5. And I was such one of the other moms that was with me. I was like, a5, she was like, it's a cut of steak. I was like, oh, <laughs> wow, he, he knew way more than me in this moment. If that little kid needs an internship, tell him to come on down, because I'm impressed. <laughs> Connor, I'm impressed. I, I recognize your game out there. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. My God. Mm -hmm. That is so good. Mm. So A5 is like the highest grade, not to school Connor, but A5 is the highest grade, and there tend to be like, you can get A4, it's priced differently, it all has to do with the intramuscular fat and marbling. But the actual Wagyu cow, I'm literally just rambling so she can eat, because this is how the show goes. The actual Wagyu breed of cow, mm -hmm. they stopped importing into America in the 1980s so they could protect the Japanese industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you ever see a ground Wagyu burger for 12 bucks, you're getting scammed. No, one more time, 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 one more time. I'm just so happy. I am so happy. This is so good. No, I feel bad if I'm about to ask depressing questions. No. That's how the show goes. No, you know, go ahead, ask away. This, the food is bringing me joy. <laughs> so your mom growing up, she nannied for other families. Mm -hmm. And you would talk about, you didn't grow up with much and you would see all the things that other people had. Mm -hmm. I believe the first perfume that you bought with your own money is a perfume from somebody else's house that you saw. Mm -hmm. Has the shine of luxury worn out at all? Or do you still really enjoy the finer things? Um, 
you know, you, you have to, I, I like to know what I'm getting or know what I'm buying. Like a, a finer thing to me is investing in art. Yeah. I love art. It's like a, a part of, you know, the thread of who I am, to be honest. You know what I mean? When you walk into my house, all you see is art. I'm so grateful to Tina Knowles and, and Swiss Beats for showing me this beautiful space to be able to express yourself and be creative. And it's in your home. It's like there's this beautiful um, Robert Pruitt uh, piece on my stairwell. And it's uh, actually a gift from my mama T and there's a beautiful woman in a grass skirt and she's holding this grenade in the back of her back. I was like, and I said, I'm gonna put it down the stairwell. I said, because if somebody come at me wrong today, they gonna get this grenade. <laughs> but it's like, like all of my art speaks to me in such different mm -hmm. ways, you know what I mean? And that's a finer thing in life and, and I appreciate that. And um, it was also something that I work hard to get. Mm -hmm. I think that's another thing, you know, everything looks so quick. Yeah. you know, on social media and everything. And I think that when you actually work hard for it and you appreciate it, you know, it's, um, that moment is the most important moment. Like that's your hard work hanging on the wall. How do you prevent your children from sort of growing up with that amount of privilege and taking things for granted? You know, we make it a point to like, Definitely talk to Titan because, um, you know, it was it was so funny. Like, I, I think at one point in time, everything, did, it's good. You had to do a I had dance. To, Kelly, you got me dancing. Wait, you this can't be the TikTok. I know you're going to try and clip this out of TikTok of me looking like Shaq. From the, like, you know Shaq and the cat meme when he's just doing this? But anyway, it was so cute because you took your body you said, ooh, 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 ooh. It was like a whole moment. It was so cute. Oh. <laughs> But um, it is. It is the thing is is that it's uh, it's it's work to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's not hard work because I always remind Titan of my beginning. And when I remind him of my beginning, I don't like to do it like too much because I remember somebody mm -hmm. said, "Don't do that. You don't want to make him feel bad." Yeah, you're still that burden on yes, him. Yes, exactly. And um, I do um, have these moments where. Um, you know, allowing him to express himself. And then he has to like tone, if his tone gets too, like, mm, that's, that's on the verge of disrespect, then I have to check him. Yeah. I think everything is up for a discussion. You know what I mean? And I like to be able to create this space of communication with my son. I think when I was growing up, that was a luxury. I didn't realize how a luxury is communicating with your kid. I didn't have a space to like really like have this, moment with my mom. Is there an element of healing the past you in your own parenting now? Yes, that's a beautiful yeah. question. Absolutely. I say that because, you know, when the, I remember one of the things I was so nervous about in being a parent was um, my patience, because I ain't have none. <laughs> yeah. And I mean it just like that. I ain't have none. <laughs> Um, I was really scared because my mom is as great as she blessed me with her space in motherhood. I would like to think that my experience was one where it was definitely different than outside it is now. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think that like, I just wanted to make things so different for my kids. Like, do you ever have moments where you're like, I'm trying to make things so different deliberately that I'm sort yes. of swinging to the other side? And I realize it, and I have to check it quickly because I realize how much, <laughs> how much I've kind of messed this part up. <laughs> so I need to fix yeah. it quickly. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Of course. And I remember, like I told him, I used to get spankings. <laughs> so he was like, oh, so your mom, this is how he broke it down, I promise. He says, so your mom gave you spanking, so do you think it's okay to spank me? Correct? And I said, oh, shit. <laughs> it's like, this one is way too emotionally intelligent. Like, this, must school, be stopped. Is, this school is so much money. <laughs> And I'm paying for them to have my child check me at home. Yeah. I, I don't know how I feel about this right now. But he is emotionally intelligent. He knows when he goes too far. Mm -hmm. um, he comes back and we talk about it beautifully. Do you still find yourself repeating certain things and immediately clock it like, oh no, that yes. was from my mom? Yes, um, like so I remember somebody um, told me about uh, self-regulation. Actually, mm -hmm. my therapist told me about self-regulation. <laughs> it's trying to figure out how to communicate with this younger person whose brain isn't fully 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Developed. And when she told it to me like that, I understood. Mm -hmm. Because we kind of expect when we're growing up, like I think that it's just natural to think like, you should just understand what I'm saying, but they don't. They're nine, you know, they're in a nine, a, a nine-year-old body. They're, they're, yeah. They deserve a, a very self-regulated and able to communicate with them. And even when they lose it, I'm still calm to meet them so that they can come back to where I am. And it has been working like a charm. So I'm happy. <laughs> Hell yeah, I got a little vlog you eating babies out here. Uh, I'm gonna start, when I have kids, I'm gonna start calling you for parenting advice. You can, I'm just like, you can. I'm yeah. learning as I go, you know, I'm still learning, so. You ready to get in dessert? Yes, Let's do it. yes. Kelly, for your final course of your last meal, we have the peach cobbler. This is made proper southern style with the cobbler batter underneath, peaches on top, then baked. We have the chocolate peanut butter pie, a little bit of flaky mulled on salt, fully homemade with the chocolate crumb crust. And then of course, a chocolate layer cake. And it is your birthday in two days from when we are filming now. So we gave you a little candle. Thank and you. And this is kind of ironic, but who sings happy birthday to a professional singer? Should we, should we all? I think we should all do it. Yes. Everyone, all right. Happy birthday to you. Me. Happy birthday to you. Me. Happy birthday, dear Kelly. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. Can we auto you. Can we auto tune that? Or? Yeah. No. You know, I think it's great. It's very authentic. <laughs> It's great. Thank you all. I got my wish though. I'm eating and I'm happy. I'm full of joy and gratitude. Tell, tell me about the desserts. I know you love chocolate and peanut butter. I've seen you I make do. a chocolate peanut butter martini yes. on Instagram. Yes. My, my love for chocolate and peanut butter actually started with Reese's uh, peanut mm. butter cups. And I remember looking at the recipe um, on foodnetwork.com like years ago. And I tried it at home and I remember taking it to the studio and everybody killed it. I actually recently took it to a studio session and the, the producer loved it for sure. Um, and then peach cobbler just reminds me of home. Peaches, mm -hmm. Atlanta. I think about um, you know my my time in my the city that borned me. Mm -hmm. You know, Atlanta, Georgia, borned me, and I'm just the only other person I know that makes peach cobbler, and it feels like it's giving me a hug. Her name is Angela Beyonce. She is a sister of mine and also an actress and just a brilliant person overall. Mm -hmm. And then chocolate cake. I'm chocolate, <laughs> but I'm chocolate and I love cake. Yeah, I just, I, these are my favorite desserts. I love chocolate, I do. Where the hell did these come from? Oh my God, what happened? Who knows, well, <laughs> we must have forgotten to drink the last round. Um, Maybe. <laughs> this okay. is really, I mean, this is proper. Oh my God. There's not even a song that sums this up right now. Kelly, I think you and I gotta write the duet right now. <laughs> <laughs> right now. No matter, no. <laughs> I can just do the, oh. I'll, just, I'll be that, I'll be the back of vocals. Oh. <laughs> but I'm gonna do that every time. I wanna ask you about the concept of chosen family because mm -hmm. your family obviously means a lot to you and you're very close with the Knowles family. I mean, Tina walked you down the aisle um, yes. But you also reconnected with your father mm -hmm. after you hadn't seen him for 30 years mm -hmm. because you said having that legacy and that connection is really important. Mm -hmm. Why is that as opposed to like the chosen family? Your family serves you in so many ways. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I'm so grateful to Tina and her girls. You know, I'm, I'm speaking of uh, B and Solange and Angie in particular and the way they've given me a sense of sisterhood is is one that I've learned through and they've loved me through that and learning and life, like how crazy that we've all known each other. You know what I mean? The public always goes to, of course, um, Phoebe, but like for Solange and Angie, like, mm. you know, we have grown up together and, and lived life together and, and had children together, become aunts together and moms together. Like, that's a real blessing. Mm -hmm. And to be able to um, have them as my as my family, even though the only thing that separates us is blood, is just a blessing. And Tina being right there by my side, my mama T, during both of my childbirths and walking down the aisle, some of the most pivotal moments of my life, even when I had to lay my mother to rest, that was mm -hmm. like, I can't imagine 
life without them. And I'm so grateful to them for that because whether it was joy or sadness, we experienced it together and it makes the relationship so much richer. Yeah. And I'm grateful for that. And my father, I mean, this is so new. It's, it's so funny because I remember calling a friend of mine who was a therapist and it was my fifth day of knowing my dad. And I'll never forget, I was like, before he calls, I have like strange butterflies. And I was like, like when you're dating someone, he was like, mm -hmm. well, that's the actual feeling that you're supposed to feel when you're three. Mm. You know oh, what wow. I mean? Yeah. yeah. So he broke it down for me in a psychological space and how, what, how and what I was supposed to be thinking and feeling and experiencing if he were there. And I'm experiencing all these things now. And I, it's just a blessing. I, I love my dad and he's just a really great, sweet man. And I'm sure being a parent now, being able to forgive your father is now giving you that grace that, oh, no matter what I do, my child can forgive. When I actually broke it down for my son, because I had to explain it to him. Sure. You know what I mean? It was... Yeah, who's this new guy? <laughs> right. <laughs> this guy just showed up to my birthday party. Who is he? That's actually what happened. Really? <laughs> I'm not joking. Really? I'm no not way. joking at all. So I told him, I said, I was like, so I had to talk with him. I said, you're going to meet your granddad. I was like, I'm just meeting my dad. Mm -hmm. He's like... How are you just meeting your dad? And so he's sitting there and I said, but you'll see him today. So I, I'm having this whole moment of, Titan, this is your granddad. And I'm looking at my dad, he goes, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes back to play with his buddies. You know what I mean? And it was so, I was like, oh, I should actually treat it like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just take it like one step at a time. I'm still so grateful to, um, my big brother, um, who said, you gotta jump. You know what I mean? If, if you want this, and he's, he's showing you that he wants the relationship, you gotta jump. And my husband has been so supportive, and he's always asking, like, you know, how's your dad? You check on your dad? Like, it's, it's, I'm just, my whole circle was just so, like, let's do it. Yeah, that mm. is a Good. beautiful story and a beautiful pie. This chocolate peanut butter pie <laughs> is so mm. delightful. Mm -hmm. This has been a beautiful meal. Overall, Kelly, you ready to get in the lightning round? Let's do the lightning round. You can keep it with a salt on that. Or. Mm. Who's the one person, dead or alive, you would want to share your actual last meal with? Oh, my husband. <laughs> what song do you want to be played at your funeral? Uh, it can't be yours. It can't be mine? No, no, no. Well, it can't be yours. Now I'm interested. Are you ready for this one? Sure am. Back that thing up, by <laughs> Yes! <laughs> And Kelly, I'm going to be there backing because that thing I, up. Because I want them to laugh. Like, we, like you know what I mean? I know that my moments with people were, like, fun and joyful. So I'm like, I want them to be like, now why does Heffa decide to play back that <laughs> up? You know what I mean? I want them to laugh. You said if you didn't become a singer, you would have been a psychoanalyst. Who's the one person you'd want to sit down with and psychoanalyze? Mm. One would be Stevie Wonder. Mm. The other one would be my son. The only reason why is because like, I think, I'm, but I'm talking about the little one. Cause he can't like really mm. like voice everything right now. And he's the closest thing you have to like being super, super small. So like a baby, wow. you know what I mean? Like I wonder what the, the innocence and like everything about that is just like, wow, you don't know what's gonna happen. And you don't pay not one bill. <laughs> <laughs> so just like the whole freedom. <laughs> But the freedom of being a baby is just like, I bet you that's like floating. Who would win in an arm wrestling match, you or Beyonce? I have to say me. I'll say, if you want to test it out, you're like, you don't have to. I'm just like, if you want to like, if you want to lock up, you know, hold on, hold on. Try it. I'll ask the next one, I'll ask the next one. All right, somebody give us a count. Three, two, one. What's your greatest regret in life? I'm sorry, you there? Mm -hmm. Kelly, greatest regret, what you got? <laughs> Don't take it light on me! Uh, oh, God! <laughs> Wait, he no, you it actually, no, you got it, though, you got it, though. <laughs> he was being nice, I don't appreciate that. I could have taken you. I got a, I got a rotator cuff in here. I could have got honest. you, it's we'll, okay. We'll do, we'll do one at the end of it. Okay. <laughs> oh, what's your greatest regret in life? My greatest regret in life? I feel like I should have trusted him. That's the one regret I have. I wish mm -hmm. I would have trusted myself a lot more in my 20s. So I encourage all of you 20-year-olds, with greatness and dreams and goals inside of you. Write them all down, plan it out, and tell everyone who doesn't believe in it to go themselves. Hell yes.
fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> Kelly Rowland, everybody. <laughs> Finally, are you happy? Yes. Goddamn right you are. Yes, I am. I'm so grateful. I'm so happy. Gratitude. Gratitude every day. I am incredibly grateful. Everybody, check out Mia Culp on Netflix. Kelly Rowland producing and starring. Kelly, if you want to deliver your last words to that camera right there. Oh, my gosh. Please go check out Mia Culpa. It is such a fly, sexy, erotic thriller you don't want to miss. You should have your girlfriends come up, and y'all should post up, and y'all should have the same meal. I'm just saying. <laughs> The official cross collab <laughs> Mia Culpa last meal. Is and have pineapple margaritas. <laughs> the unofficial drink of Mia Culpa. Kelly for real. This is an incredible conversation, thank incredible you. meal. Thank you so much you for coming. You too. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for stopping my mythical kitchen. We got new videos every week. You know the deal. See y'all next time. All right. Now for real. Now for real. Now for real. We're clearing it out. We're clearing it out. Get the salt out because I was slipping on the salt. You were slipping on the salt. You were taking it easy for me. Right, right, right. okay. Someone give us a count. Oh, I got hair in my mouth. I'm not going to be able to fuck. I thought you were taking off your earrings. I was like, oh, shit. Two, one, go. Just got to turn the wrist. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I thought I hurt you. I thought I hurt you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Me and my pride will leave stage right. Okay. Face the reality of mortality head on with our new Last Meals Hat and Tea. Available now at mythical.com.